lot of police shootings making making their rounds in the public uh, spectrum, public eye, whatever you want to call it. I mean, I've been kind of keeping track for the last, like, five years or so. <clears throat> it's off the charts, man. Police are just basically shooting unarmed people in a way that kind of makes you think that there's either a lot of inexperienced police out there that um, as soon as they feel threatened, in most of these cases, the person didn't even have a weapon, so there's no way the police could have seen the weapon. This one here, though, this has to be the most ridiculous acquittal I've ever seen of a police officer. Already. I mean, if you just believed... Uh, Philando Castile's wife, um, who was in the car and filmed after he was shot, if you just believe her, what she said was that he was doing everything they said and told them he had a firearm, told them, you know, then the cop said, okay, don't, don't reach for it, and then the cop told him to get his ID, or maybe it was... Not, you know, maybe that wasn't the right order, but, you know, it was all kind of fast. Well, we finally seen the dash cam video, and what we seen was a straight-up murder. The, the assailant <laughs> was the cop, and the murder victim was the driver, Castile, uh, Philando Castile, who was totally complying with every order. So if he had this carry permit, um, and he had his firearm, and he told the, the officer that he had a firearm, so everything was according to the law. And then the cop told him not to reach for his gun, and he said, okay, I'm not reaching for my gun, twice, I think. And then the cop started shooting him. Geronimo Yemez. Said he, he said he was afraid for his life, and that's all it takes, man. That's all it takes for a jury to let a cop go. But sometimes you got to push a little harder. You got to push the buttons a little more. And in this case, and in many other cases, like we've seen, marijuana somehow comes into play. It's unfucking believable, man. And. When I hear this story here, the first thing I thought of was maybe he did smell marijuana right when he, you know, right when the window opened or whatever. He smelled marijuana, and that instantly, like, triggered the cop. He instantly, it wasn't fear. It was authoritarian adrenaline. That's what a cop has when they shoot the, the, the other person. Like when the other person is running away and the cop feels like, oh, he might get away or he just the act of running from me is such an act of defiance that I, I should just shoot him. And I mean, I don't know if they're tr obviously they don't train the cops to shoot people, do they? But here we are faced with another situation where a cop shoots somebody who happens to be armed, but he wasn't brandishing his weapon. He was telling the cop that he wasn't going to reach for it, that he wasn't reaching for it. Cop shot him, and then the cop was interviewed. So let's just read some of this. Following the announcement that Yemez was found not guilty in a fatal shooting of Castile, the Ramsey County Attorney's Office in Minnesota released a collection of documents centered around the case. One document includes a transcript from the interview with Yenas where he blamed the smell of weed for his fear in the situation. <sighs> Quote, I thought I was going to die, the former Minneapolis police officer said. I thought if he, if he has the guts and the audacity to smoke marijuana in front of, five, in front of the five-year-old girl and risk her lungs and risk her life, by giving her secondhand smoke and the front seat passenger doing the same thing, then what? What care does he have about me? That's got to be the stupidest fucking thing I've ever heard in my life. I mean, obviously, 
there's this reefer madness shit that's been this damn cloud that's hung over marijuana for uh, 80 plus years now. But this is beyond the pale. This right here is, isn't, it's like if somebody was completely brainwashed by the reefer madness and thought that marijuana was so bad that the secondhand smoke of marijuana would actually be uh, endangering this four-year-old girl that's in the car. Now, granted, smoking in an enclosed car with anybody involved is probably not a good idea. But let me just say this. Nobody in their right mind in this day and age should have an, a preconceived notion that secondhand marijuana smoke is somehow toxic in any way, shape, or form. And what's this, th this whole thing about risking her lungs? There's no, nobody in their, nobody in this day and age, no matter what level of propaganda they believe on marijuana, I mean, really has, there's nothing that really says, that, oh yeah, if you breathe secondhand smoke of marijuana in, your lungs are in trouble. This statement sounds so contrived, it almost sounds like it was completely made up at the time. I mean, there's, I almost don't believe there was marijuana smell because this is just like everything else about it is just like point blank fucked up. And then he's like, you know, if, if, if they don't care about blowing secondhand smoke around this car, how does he even know that they were fucking smoking in the car? Just because he smelled weed doesn't mean, I mean, and if he didn't say anything about seeing smoke in the air. Or like when he rolled the window down, like a big cloud of smoke came out and it had to clear before he can even see the fucking people in there. Nothing like that's reality. Just like his fucking statement is anything but reality. I don't get this, dude. I don't get how this statement survived any kind of scrutiny. Because anybody that heard it should have been like, huh? What were you worried about? What, where'd you grow up? What was you taught about marijuana? I mean, marijuana is completely fucking harmless <laughs> to a four or five year old kid. Even secondhand smoke, you'd really have to hold a bag over someone's head and just fill it up with that secondhand smoke and make them breathe it a few times for it to be even harmful. So what the fuck is this worry about secondhand smoke, even in a, in a car with the windows up? I wouldn't want to do it because I'm just, I'm just, um, I'm, I'm respectful. And I believe that Philando was also respectful and wasn't blowing smoke around a car with a kid in it. That's bullshit. You got, you got to have some proof of that. That's a fucking accusation you're making basically. Cause you're making a statement that's going to be on the record. And that's going to eventually become a public statement, which we see it has. And now we're sitting here scratching our heads like, what the fuck's this guy talking about? Is he like the last person to Google marijuana or something? Like, what the fuck is this? And he's a police officer? Is this the kind of shit they're training cops? Nowadays, when you go to police academy, they tell you that fucking marijuana smoke can fucking kill you. This is ridiculous, guys. This is one more time that a police got off of a fucking murder for whatever reason, but this is just exclusively fucking crazy. First, he violates a, the Philando Castile's Second Amendment right. Where are you at, NRA? The NRA don't give a shit about y'all, man. They don't care about you. The NRA are just, they're just there to sell guns. That's it. The gun manufacturers are like, we need to sell as many fucking guns as possible. What's a good way to do it? And they're like, well, we can make the white, crazy rednecks out there that are scared shitless of black people. All right. We can tell them that, you know, there's going to be a race war around the corner or something. I don't know. Oh, I got a good idea. How about if we get a black president and he's a Democrat? <laughs> then everybody will think that he's going to come and take their guns away. 
I mean, that's really the the NRA's only job is to sell guns. And Obama was helping them every time there was a, a mass shooting or something involved involving like crazy people with guns shooting people. Obama was right there to talk about it and you know console us. But nobody ever did any regulations. And I'm not sitting here trying to say, hey, Obama should have came and rounded up the guns because I don't believe in that either. I mean, I believe in the Second Amendment, kind of, but I don't believe that this interpretation should go to the point where, oh, yeah, anybody that's a citizen should be able to have nuclear fucking missiles, man. You know, there's a reason why we have a military. I mean, we're not exactly using our military for the reason that it's there for. It's to, supposed to be to protect us. But we've been using our military for corporate interests for quite some time now. But that's a whole other story and a whole other channel. We're going to stick to the fucking what I what I know and why I'm talking about all that shit is because here we have another police officer involved shooting of an unarmed. I'm going to say he was armed, but not brandishing a weapon or not even trying to brandish a weapon. It's like we had uh, Terrence Crutcher, who was gunned down on his right in front of his car door. Apparently she thought he was reaching into the car or trying to get in the car or something, but that doesn't matter. He had his back practically turned to the cop and he didn't do anything. He was just kind of standing there by the door. Even if he reached up and opened the doors, he still had a few more moves to make before he was going to actually get something. And I don't know this non-lethal force. There's a lot of other ways you can deal with somebody that doesn't actually have a gun pointed at you it makes you wonder are these cops really all that brave man i thought you had to be brave to be a cop it seems like as soon as there's a slim chance or whatever if you want to believe this then the guns come out and the shoot it's the next thing is you're getting shot so be careful out there and if you watch the video which i'm not gonna on, on this video, I'm not going to watch it with you, but, but I don't encourage you to watch it. But if you want to find, you know, do a little fact checking and fact finding, first thing that happens is he pulls him over and he talks about how he has his his lights don't work in the back. I don't know if it's the tail lights or the brake lights or one of the might be the whole thing's just not working, don't work properly or some shit. So there's a warning to people, especially if you're uh, black or brown. Um, I'm here to tell you. From what I've seen, and this isn't the first time I've seen somebody in an incident because they had a faulty equipment on their car. This is like three or four times just this year, I think, you know, that I've seen something similar to this. This was last year anyway. But, yeah, his taillights weren't working. Reason for a cop to pull you over. You roll the window down and you start talking to the cop and he smells weed. The next thing you know, he's got his hand on his gun. And then you tell him you got a gun and he starts shooting you. So, I mean, the, what, I, what I really get out of my takeaway is, is that the cop wasn't racist. And he, you know, he might have had a pre-built-in um, assumptions about, let's say, you know, black people being dangerous or something. Um, I don't really know the guy's history. I, I'm not going to try to, capit you know, get inside his head or whatever. But... <laughs> I mean, come on, man. You just don't shoot somebody unless you have a gun pointed at you. I mean, even then, I don't know. He was, it was like so quick. It happened so quick, there's no way he could have mistaken any kind of a movement wrong. It was like almost right after he said, hey, don't reach for your gun. He said, I'm not. And he said it again, and then he shot him. So, I don't know, man. All right, there was another part of the interview where Giannis was remarking about how, why Castile owned a weapon, suggesting that he thought it was used to fend off drug dealers. So, he went in there either into this interview room with a whole bunch of made-up shit that he just thought of at the last minute, or he really did think about all this shit on the spot and it's just weird. I mean, he has a lot of pre preconceived notions about stuff that's just completely false. And also I think he needs more training or he would have need more training. I don't think he should be a cop anymore now, 
But this this is a this is an example of somebody that has zero experience, zero training in law enforcement, and is just talking out of his ass. Because this is listen to this shit. All right, usually people that carry firearms carry them on their waistband. No, not always the case, dude. Being that the inside of the vehicle smelled like marijuana, I didn't know if he was keeping it on him for protection from a drug dealer or anything like that, or any other people trying to rip him. Rip him meaning steal from him. I mean, this guy, this cop sounds kind of like if you can't beat him, join him. Um, he don't really sound that street smart, though. That sounds like some real street dumb shit to me. And being that the inside of the vehicle smelled like marijuana, I didn't know if he was keeping it on him for protection. Or from... What in the fuck, man? Yannis' statement are not only prejudiced against Castile. He assumes that Castile must be the one smoking marijuana and he owns a gun to ward off drug dealers. Yeah. I mean, that's like I said, he made so many assumptions. Like, he assumed that they smoked the weed in front of the kid, which doesn't really make sense. He would probably see evidence of that. Like, there's a joint sitting there. It's still lit. They're smoking a blunt. They fucking, they're still smoking the car. Whatever. And then, but are an example of blatant implicit bias. Yeah. Nothing but bias here, man. This is just ridiculous. And you're thinking, well, man, the jury had to, like, if you watch the video, you're like, man, what jury could have fucking not convicted this cop? Well, the jury was stacked with pro-gun, pro-cop, middle-aged white people. Dash cam footage of the exact moment Philando Castillo was murdered by Minnesota police officer Geronimo Yanez was released to late Tuesday. The video proves two things. Castillo would not have been more compliant, could not have been more compliant, while Yanez responded with violence and several rounds of gunfire. There is no ambiguity in the footage or the audio, no question that Yenes is unqualified to be carrying a gun, no question he was a far greater danger to Minnesota citizens than the man he killed. To watch that scene and not believe Philando Castillo was murdered is to be believe black life has no inherent claim to existence. I don't know, I mean, I would say that it would have to mean that you just... uh empirically believe every single thing that a cop says, even though that there's no way he could have been reaching for a gun. The jury was shown the footage several times over the course of Yana's trial, yet they chose to acquit him on all charges. It's a verdict that's maddeningly, infuriatingly, and heartbreakingly illogical, yet consistent with every jury in this country that's been asked to rule on the deaths of black people at the hands of police. The U.S. system of criminal just, in, <laughs> injustice fails black folks from start to finish by design. And that's true, man. If you look at all the, especially, I mean, if you look at all the major headliners that you probably seen on CNN or whatever news channel you watch, um... Yeah, none of those cops are convicted. Not even the one where the guy was running away from the cop and the cop shot him in the back several times and then tried to plant the plant the scene and you know rearrange things in the scene to make it look like the uh, person had s like stolen a taser from the cop. And the other cop on the scene was helping him out with it. And none of nothing happened to these cops. They might not have a job anymore. They might have been charged with something, but I don't think any of the cops that we're talking about here have been convicted of any crimes. More intimate look at the jurors in Yenna's criminal case compiled by the Minnesota Star Tribune offers not only insights into how they arrived at their decisions, but look at just how well stacked the jury was against the, just the verdict for Castile. There were just two black people on the jury of Castile's supposed peers, Juror 1 is a young African-American who works as a shift manager at Wendy's and personal care attendant for his mom. He expressed some lack of faith in the criminal justice system, reporting, uh, reportedly expressing a belief that the wealthy and powerful could get off in the legal system because they can hire better attorneys. Very true. Juror 8 is an 18-year-old Ethiopian-American who has lived in the U.S. since age 10. The Tribune notes that the defense tried to strike her due to unfamiliarity with the legal system but the judge denied the attempt. Unfamiliar, I mean, she's been around since age 10. <laughs> Did you study the legal system before you were age 10? Genius. 
Uh, the rest of those selected for the jury were overwhelmingly middle-aged white Minnesotans, many of whom expressly stated support for the police or belief in the infallibility of the criminal justice system, like I said. Here's how the list shakes out, taken directly from the Star Tribune. Now, I'm not going to go over the list, a little, little bit of word here, but let me just say this. If you do go through the list, what you, you think of this in your head if you go through this list. This is uh, out of alternet.org. Um, it's front page. It's on the list, like this list here. If you Google this, uh, what did I Google? Marijuana. Um, and I think I just Philando Castile marijuana. That's all I Googled, and you got this. And when you get this, please, you know, you don't buy, you don't got to worry about reading all these. It's all different people's way of interpreting it. But there's a couple of them that were interesting. Um, and basically, what they say is is that this is how it happens, man. This is how you demonize the victim. One of the ways to do it, as you've seen with Trayvon Martin and uh, Michael Brown, one of the ways you do it, and now you see it with Philando Castile, is you talk about marijuana. That's all you got to do. Marijuana automatically like softens the blow to the jury or the, the internal affairs investigation or whatever you're doing the interview for there, buddy. So that's all we uh, have on this one. It's a sad situation, man. It, I don't think you're going to see it turn around uh, in the Trump era because it seems like there was a lot of talk about that, about reforming Obama-era reforms. Obama, all he tried to do is do a couple of things that would soften the blow of the drug war, and it really didn't. And then Trump came along and, oh, let's just go right back to this other way of doing things. And they did. So that's the, that's the story there. Mexico legalizes medical marijuana. Well, guys, it looks like we're the last country on the North American peninsula or uh, continent or whatever you want to call it. We're the last ones to legalize medical marijuana. And will will the country as a whole do it? No. Nope. I mean, the way we're going right now, we might just roll back the clock to the 80s, except for add the new surveillance uh, and forfeiture situation we got built up in this country. I mean, Trump and, and company wants to run that shit like, uh, like some kind of uh, like mafia or something up there. And one of the things they're looking into is how they can reel in the drug war, you know, make it so it's like a full-on business. And one of the ways they do that is they, they make the forfeiture laws different, and they make it so you can't have accounts on Bitcoin, um, I've seen something where Congress is trying to change some regulations and to make that a thing. They make it so when you're moving money or assets around, then you, if you don't report it to them, then it's considered money laundering or something weird. So watch out, guys. Uh, keep Pay attention to what's going on. Um, the U.S. government under the Trump administration and the Jeff Sessions legal department, we'll call it. They're really wanting to ramp shit up. We've heard the, re the rhetoric from the DEA. We've heard the rhetoric from the Department of Justice and any other organization or federal agency that you want to name that can enforce a, a marijuana law. They all are saying that they will, all the way down to the TSA. And this is, it's ridiculous, man. And if you think about it, CBD is getting busted left and right now. I don't know. I mean, I said a crackdown might happen because why else would the DEA start talking about it? The FDA, they want to, they want 
CBD to be something that's packaged in a nice little pill or something else where it's a single, you know, administer a dose by this, and this is an exact measurement, and it's always the same. It can be done, but it don't have to be. And we have other things going on besides just CBD. We have whole plant cannabis, which is medicine. So that's what they don't want. They don't want that to be medicine, because if that's medicine then the people just have something without their uh, interference and without them making all the money, monopolizing it. I don't even know what. <clears throat> you know what. We, we, I, you wouldn't watch this channel unless you either agree with me or you work for law enforcement and you're trying to pick my brain. So either one, you know, you're going to get it. If you're gonna you're gonna feel what I feel because this drug war has beaten us all up so much that we this is the last country to legalize medical marijuana on this particular continent. If you talk about South America, there's only a couple of places there. I'm not sure if that's even true. South America is starting to legalize recreational marijuana left and right. Um, so I don't know. I mean, wh how, how obvious does it have to be that this is no longer the land of the free? I mean, how free are you if you can't even smoke marijuana, if you can't even grow marijuana? And, uh, yeah, we'll get to that in Mexico. Canada's medical marijuana program has gone through some changes over the years or whatever, but as a, as a national program, it kind of still leaves a lot of things up to individual regions, I think. And when it comes to, to America, we just have a patchwork quill of different states. Like this is, uh, you know, 1498 or some shit. A decrease in, or a decree issued by Mexican President Enrique Pen, Pena Nieto Today, confirm that Mexico has legalized cannabis for medical use after overwhelming support from Mexico's lower house of Congress. Pina Nieto was once a vehement opponent of cannabis legalization, but has since called for a re-examination of the global drug policy after nationwide drug or er, uh, public debate on legalization in early 2016. So far, the solutions to control drugs and crime implemented by the international community have been frankly insufficient. Pino Nieto. Uh, told the 2016 United Nations General Assembly Special Commission or Special Sessions in April 2016, we must move beyond prohibition to be to effect to effective prevention. <laughs> what? <laughs> effective prevention? Have you guys ever figured out how to do effective prevention? How about just doing proper education? So ridiculous. I mean, what is the, what is this right-wing bullshit where they want to prevent you, they want to try to prevent people from doing this and that? <sighs> All right, last year, Pennanoito even went so far as to introduce a measure that would allow Mexican citizens to possess up to an ounce of cannabis without repercussions, but the bill stalled in Congress. Well, that sucks. The medical marijuana bill sailed through the Senate with ease in December 2016, and Mexico's lower house and parliament passed the bill in April with a vote of 347 to 7 in favor of approval. Mexico's Secretary of Health, Dr. Jose Naro Robles, uh, voiced his support for the measure by saying, I welcome the approval of the therapeutic use of cannabis in Mexico. The decree was issued by the president today, and specifies that the Ministry of Health will be tasked with drafting and implementing the regulations of public policies regulating the medical use of pharmacological derivatives of cannabis sativa, indica, and Americana, or marijuana, including tetrahydrocannabinol uh, and the stereochemical variants, as well as how to regulate the research and national production of them. This is sounding a little bit technically wordy, um, Come on, guys. 
let's just legalize marijuana. Um, let's not jail people for cannabis. And what are you guys even talking about? <laughs> Piana Neto's uh, decree effectively eliminates the criminalization of medical use of cannabis. Okay. THC, CBD, and all cannabis derivatives, as well as legalizing the production and distribution of cannabis for medical and therapeutical uses. The ruling eliminates prohibition and criminalization of acts related to the medical use of, medical mar- of, of marijuana and its scientific research and those relating to the production and distribution of the plant for those purposes, stated the lower house parliament known as La Camara de Pordeos. <laughs> I tried. All right. Currently, the only cannabis that will be permitted must contain 1% or less of the tetracannab- uh, THC. And the Ministry of Health will be required to study the medical and therapeutic effects of cannabis before creating the framework for a medical marijuana program infrastructure. Hmm, I don't know what. There's certainly still there. There will certainly be still be hurdles to overcome on the bumpy road to medical marijuana. But Mexico just surpassed the biggest obstacles so far. Whatever. Whoa. Okay, that's got to be the corniest thing I've ever heard right there. The only cannabis that will be permitted must contain 1% or less of THC, the Ministry of Health. We're required to study. So how are you going to really do anything with this 1% or less of THC? We're talking about hemp here, not marijuana or cannabis. Cannabis, maybe. Cannabis, is everything's really cannabis really but what are you doing man i thought you just said it was legal to do marijuana <laughs> medical marijuana decriminal he eliminates the criminalization so what's the penalty if you're actually running really good thc levels <laughs> so whatever man um mexico legalizes medical marijuana awesome their program or whatever the fuck this regulation shit is here sounds a little shady. So we'll see how it pans out. 